anyone in the travel industry would know about Sabre Travel Network and Travelocity. And airlines will be familiar with uh, Sabre Airline Solutions, uh, all of which are divisions of Sabre Holdings headquartered in Texas. The company has approximately 9,000 employees in 59 countries. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Tom Klein is the president of Sabre Holdings. Tom has attributed much of his success to, and I quote, uh, being at the right place at the right time with the right people. Yet he is no stranger to hard work, obviously, or the importance of exceptional customer service. Uh, lessons he learned in his early years, uh, working jobs like paper boy, janitor, pizza delivery, cool, and bartender while attending uh, Villanova University. Prior to joining Sabre in 1994, uh, Tom held a variety of sales, marketing, and operations positions at American Airlines and uh, Consolidated Freightways. Well, I think, you know, the, I think the, the biggest excitement in the industry, and I think the whole travel industry viewed itself as a recovery play mm -hmm. coming out of, a, coming out of a, a, a bad turn on the economy. And we've started to see that, particularly in business travel, despite all the things that are going on around the world, you know, we've had disruptions in the Middle East, we've had natural disasters in Japan and uh, here in the U.S., what's going on in, the, in, in, in some of our southern states right now with the floods. Despite all of that, business travels back strong, and, and we're starting to see leisure travel pick up quite a bit as well. So I, I think all the promise of our industry being resilient and, and people being resilient about wanting to get out and travel and, and wanting to get out and see customers to create business opportunities for themselves, that's all, it's all starting to happen. So that's been the, that's been the, the, no. the biggest satisfaction in the last 12 months. And what didn't work so well uh, the well, last I, 12 months? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I think, you know, we, I think the industry is tired from, and, and the world it gets tired about all these, these terrible uh, disasters that we've had to deal with. So every time we feel like we're completely over the hump, and that everything's going to be going well for some sustained period of time. We have something like the the, the tragedy in Japan uh, happen, and, and really sets back uh, our industry and, and really business in general in a meaningful way. So, I, look, those are things we can't control. But boy, we, we could we really could use a break and have a sustained period where we we don't have some uh, some big disruption like we've been having over the last several years. And what can we look forward from your group uh, the next 12 months that's exciting? Yeah, well, I think at, at Sabre there's, uh, there's a number of things going on that, that are quite exciting. I think in, the, in the tech, our technology businesses, all through the downturn, uh, had very good performance. We sold a lot of technology, and it's because hospitality companies and travel, travel agencies and airlines all look at technology as kind of the long pole in the tent when they're trying to build a, a new business model or build recovery models. So we've spent, a, we've invested through the downturn to try to bring innovation to the market at a time when we think people would, would start responding to it. And we're starting to see that now. And uh, areas like um, allowing uh, both hospitality companies and airlines to have better insights into their customers and using technology in a way that um, that, that allows their people to do a better job servicing their com cu customers, in some cases with less people, uh, is a core, a core part of what we're doing on the technology side of our business. In, throughout the 90s, uh, people like myself that were in travel technology would right. always say that Sabre was on top of leveraging PC computing power, moving right. out of the legacy systems, and it did. Right. Um, and of course, others have followed, but more right. slowly. Uh, what will Sabre's business model and technology service look like five years from now? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, you know, there's a, just a couple of years ago, there were a few guys out there talking about cloud computing and, and, and there'd be a little bit of a giggle in the room and even, the, even people like Larry Ellison and, at Oracle would joke about, well, you know, we've, we're already doing the cloud. But the reality is that cloud computing and the ability to deliver services to companies and to c consumers uh, in a way that's very different and very very light on infrastructure compared to what what cu cu customers have to deal with today is a reality. And we've been we've been on the leading edge of that trend, but we expect our whole service offering to be very much in a software as a service model uh, and very very light on uh, customers having to have hardware or having to have experts that know how to run systems. Uh, and that we think that's a big trend for our industry and a big trend for the technology industry in general. So Sabre and all the other GDS started with the blue screen, no right. no intelligence on the on the box. Right. Are we going back to less intelligence and in, less in heavy In some ways, on the box? in some ways, where yeah, the, the, well, some of the devices are pretty smart. So uh, you know, certainly on the desktop, we think that's going to be you know, you're going to go access services out of the cloud. But you know, our mobile devices are going to be smart. 
um, and and melding what the, the the intelligence of what's in that in that device with uh, with some great software applications and great travel applications is also an, another big trend that we're, we're we're working hard on. Talking about the future, social media, mm -hmm. you know, uh, still relatively new, but we have right. seven hundred, you know, cl closing on a billion users on right. Facebook. Right. Uh, what does that fit into the strategy of ultimately that's a, that's, where your content's going to yeah, go? Yeah, it's an important question because we do, as as industries and as businesses, we continue to talk about social media as something new. But that said, we have to recognize that there's a segment of customers, uh, and it's, mo it's you know it's it's it cuts across all age groups. But there's a segment demographically in the under 25 age group that they all use that they're all there. So the whole segment's there. It's not a it's not a small piece of that segment. It's the whole segment. So, mm -hmm. so companies that aren't focused on how to use social media and integrate it into their core services are at risk of missing a whole segment of the market that's that's getting older and is going to have more money quickly and are going to travel. Mm -hmm. So we 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 have to be out there in the various social media channels, but we also have to think about how we integrate our services and make them more digestible for people who want to talk to their friends and colleagues uh, using new medias. I know you're uh, passionate about sustainable development, sustainable tourism. Right. You have, I don't know if she reports to you, Le Na Leilani. Leilani Latimer. She reports right to the CEO and chairman of our company, which is where we think it belongs. We think I it's see. important. Um, earlier you talked about, uh, you know, the low points of mm -hmm. uh, the industry, and right. Sabre included, have been some, some of the uh, disasters, you know, uh, uh, in particular weather, climate right. Uh, right. related. It's interesting, somebody uh, at dinner last night was saying, uh, somebody 35 years old, you know, the last 10 years has been more disasters, major disasters that the world has ever seen. And I all of a sudden realized, being 60, you know, but God, in 60 years, the major ones have been in the past 10 years. Right, right, and, right. And you, and you were uh, telling me about preparation for pandemic, and I brought up climate change, these right. things, tend to fall through the radar once they're no longer covered by the media. Right, right. And, and what do you think the industry should be doing? What is, why, why are you concerned as Sabre or I guess you're or uh, industry leader? Right, well I think a couple of things, Charlie. I mean in our careers, yours and mine, um, you know, 20 years ago, if there was a disaster in Japan, we would have felt bad about it, we would have heard a little bit about it, but it might not have impacted our business that much. Today, uh, it really, the, you know, the big travel companies and big travels and industries across the world are very uh, integrated across the globe. So when something happens, we have to feel responsible and we have to feel like we have a, a part in trying to make things recover. We also have to think about we have, a, have to have a part in preventing things from happening. Now, we can't prevent natural disasters, but uh, most of them anyway. But we can get ahead of some other big issues. You mentioned pandemics. There's, there's, in the last hundred years, there's been three major pandemics. There's, there's generally one every 10 to 50 years. So we don't see them all that often. But a pandemic is the one thing in today's world where people are traveling as much as they are from, from all regions of the world that you can really uh, grind economies to a halt with a major pandemic. And the travel industry has a role from a data perspective, from an information perspective, to help governments, to help uh, inform some of the organizations like the World Health Organization and work in conjunction with the World Health Organization so that we're doing a better job of using all the fabulous technology and information we have in the travel industry and, and using that as a platform to get good information out about what's really going on with health issues and, and how we might be able to, to maybe again be, be ahead and prevent the spread of uh, a pandemic as opposed to be reactive to one. At the end of the day, if we're making our bucks and it's our passion to help people travel, that right. includes in case things go wrong and be prepared well, to get that information out, have it planned so it's boom there, huh? That's right. And just a few years ago, Bill Marriott said at this very conference um, that the thing that he worried most about was a, a pandemic because it could, again, bring economies and, and business to a halt across the globe. And that's, that's where it's, it's still true today and we have a lot of work to do to get it right.